car wrecks are always scary. But if you're in an accident while pregnant, they can be especially terrifying because you're not just worried about yourself. You're worried about injuries to the baby, miscarriages, stillbirths. So the first question folks ask if they've been in a car accident while pregnant is, is my baby going to be okay? The answer, fortunately, is most of the time, yes. There are, according to statistical estimates, about 200,000 um, car wrecks per year in which pregnant women are involved. And tragedies do happen, but statistically at least, if you're the kind of person who wants to know this, the chances of severe injury to the fetus are pretty low. An estimate say from about 1,500 to 5,000 uh, fetuses are lost each year in car accidents out of 200,000 total collisions. So the odds are pretty good. And sort of, I guess unsurprisingly, it depends a lot on what kind of crash you're in. So we'll look at a couple of pictures, um, but this is, I think, fairly intuitive. I mean, it, it makes sense if, if your car looks like this after the collision, if you were involved in a fender bender, more than likely your baby's fine. If it was more severe, if your car looks like this after the collision, then there might be something to worry about. There are a few different types of injuries that, that we'll talk about today. But the overarching theme is that nature protects your baby pretty well. We have a little image here of um, a baby in the womb. Nature does a pretty good job here. Uh, women while pregnant have been getting in bumped and jostled and taking falls for as long as humans have existed. And nature does a good job of protecting the baby at least most of the time. So we don't mean to freak anybody out, but it is possible that injuries can occur if you're in a car accident while pregnant. So we'll talk about some of those injury types next. And the first one that we'll talk about is called a placental abruption. A placental abruption occurs when um, the placenta is torn away from the wall of the uterus. And we, we have a diagram of how that might look. Um, on the left here you can see the normal placenta and uterus and then on the right is the tear where the placenta has torn away from the uterine wall or the wall of the uterus right here. Often that little area will fill with blood. That can be dangerous and if you have a placental abruption that is an emergency because it can affect and greatly diminish the amount of blood and oxygen available to your baby. That's not a good thing so prompt fast medical attention is really important. The next kind of injury we'll talk about um, is a uterine rupture. These are more rare but they involve a tear to the uterus itself. So you're going to see this um, you know, far more often in a more serious type collision where there's some heavy trauma. Maybe, um, maybe the baby strikes the steering wheel or is thrown into something else in the car. But that would, a, a uterine uh, rupture means that the uterus is torn. In this little illustration, they have the baby's head tearing the uterus right here. And that's also an emergency. Uh, and it's an even greater, faster emergency because blood starts to get lost. So the effect on the baby is strong and immediate. So if this does happen, which is uncommon, it is a real grade A emergency. Now the next that we'll talk about is maternal shock. Now shock is a word that we hear a lot. Uh, people are going to be shell shocked and sometimes when they're scared or frightened or surprised they'll say I was shocked. And that's fine, it's the correct use of the word shock, but that's not the medical definition. The medical definition of shock refers to the sudden and, ra um, and you know, large loss of blood in the body. So if the mom loses a lot of blood really fast because she's cut really badly in the collision or there's internal bleeding, that can be bad because what the body will do is start to limit blood flow to areas of the body other than the mother's brain and heart. 
and that can include the baby. So if the mother goes into shock, that is, loses a lot of blood, then the baby is in danger. But this doesn't really apply if the mother is just very surprised or very scared. That doesn't tend to cause these types of issues. I mean, if there's a lot of stress, that can lead to some preeclampsia, but that's sort of a different grade of emergency. It isn't quite as bad as the maternal shock that we're talking about here. And then the, the last type of injury that we'll talk about is direct fetal trauma. This is really rare, but it's like an, an injury to the baby because the baby has gotten smashed or hit, like a direct broken bone or injury to the baby like that. It's really rare. Almost always this is caused by um, the womb striking a steering wheel or something like that. And the reason it's rare is what we talked about earlier. Nature does a pretty good job of cushioning and protecting the baby. Now, in Georgia, as in many states, if a car accident causes an injury to the baby, then that's compensable. Then the at-fault driver, or whoever's responsible for the injuries, can be held accountable, responsible, and liable for that. Georgia has a, a rule that's phrased kind of uniquely, although I, I think the idea is fairly simple. In Georgia, the loss of a fetus or the loss of a baby is compensable. That is to say, compensation can be had for that if it's after the quickening. Now, quickening is a little word you don't see in a lot of other contexts, but Georgia courts have said that that refers to when the baby is capable of moving independently inside the womb. And have said more precisely that occurs usually around 16 weeks, maybe as early as 10. And the, the Georgia Supreme Court um, has talked about this in a case called Kempson against State. And if you want to look up cases, if you're a lawyer, it's 278 uh, Georgia 285. And the pinpoint citation is 286. So there can be compensation for that. Um, sometimes people ask about seatbelts and airbags. There are some, some mothers who are worried, like, well, this seatbelt goes right near my baby. Maybe I should leave it off. And what about these airbags? They're going to pop out. They can hit my baby. Should I be worried about that? The answer, overwhelmingly, is wear your seatbelt. We had to think about this. I'm a father of two young kids, as well as a plaintiff's lawyer who deals with car wrecks all day long, every day, professionally. So it's something my family thought a lot about. But the answer is pretty clear. Wear your seatbelt and use your airbags. Uh, it is possible for a seatbelt or an airbag to cause injury. But it is way more likely that an injury will be caused because someone isn't belted or isn't using the airbags. Because what's far more dangerous to a baby than the seatbelt itself is the idea of the mom getting thrown around the interior of the car, where she or the baby can get banged into seatbelt, console, door, or anything else that happens to be inside the car. So wear your belt and wear it correctly. We have a, another video that addresses this, but briefly, here's an illustration from the National Highway Traffic Safety Administration talking about belt use. And just like any other time, the, the lap and shoulder belts which you need, the lap should go across the pelvis, across the iliac crest, which is like right here, and if you're far along, underneath the protuberance there, so like underneath where the baby is, and the shoulder belts worn normally. So this is the way to do it, and this is not the way to do it. You don't want the belt to go across the large abdomen where the baby is. It goes underneath over the iliac crest. As with any personal injury, if you've been in a car accident while pregnant, listen to your body. If everything feels fine, go get checked out, but you probably are fine. If you're feeling abdominal pain, unusual cramping, if there's vaginal bleeding, those can be signs of a problem. But in any case, go get checked out for you and for the baby.